Hello and welcome to GDB World. In today's video we'll be exploring how to create a Chesterfield sofa material in Substance Designer. This is a part one of two part series. In the first part we'll focus on building the shapes that we'll use for colouring and blending which will be primarily covered in part two. If you enjoyed today's video please like and subscribe and with that being said let's jump straight into the video. To start us out we're going to create a metallic roughness 4k graph. Now we're going to create just a standard sort of setup as we normally do. So this is where we take our ambient occlusion, height and normal map and we all blend them into the same blend node. So this is the blend node that we connect all our height information to. Starting out by creating a shape. We're just going to use a square, change the tiling to 2, rotate it by 45 degrees to create a bit of a kitchen tile look. And then we're going to start blending that in uh, just with our blend node just so we can see something in the renderer below. Then a non-uniform blur this sort of softens the edges so it creates a little bit of a bevel for us. And using a gradient map uh, we can just control the bevel a little bit more with that. Um, we may want to tweak that later on depending how it looks and then again it's the same sort of for the levels as well. We want to sort of control its depth and how much it affects the graph. Just duplicate the base shape there and then change it to a pyramid. Um, and then we're going to sort of blur it with HQ blur just to soften it off, make it nice and round. And then you just adjust it a little bit further with levels. And then this is what we're going to uh, use a directional warp to um, distort the shape with the original shape a little bit. Finally we blend these two together. You should have a nice little sort of wavy sort of shape. Um, just sort of shows that like the stuffing inside of the sofa is a little bit more uh, distorted or random. And then we can use a distance node just to tighten that up a little bit and uh, give it a little bit more puffiness. Max light on that blend node. Um, if the video is going a little bit too quick, just feel free to pause the video on each bit if you want to copy my settings. Base plus is just the same indentation, so we'll just reuse the same shapes as we did previously, as well as the direction warp again, just making sure we're warping it with the same node and settings uh, used before. And then you blend those two together and you'll start to see it creates a nice indentation for us. Now we move into making the buttons. So the buttons are just going to be hemisphere. Uh, shrink it down a bit and we'll keep the tile at three. Then we're going to want to make a mask uh, with this hemisphere just as a, to keep the corners sharp. I'm just using the levels. Just gives you a little bit more uh, control into how much you want to uh, mask out. You could also use the histogram scan here as well. Just push that into the opacity map uh, and then holding the alt key you can create like another join node and then push that into the background leaving it as a copy because it's just going to blend it with the black background and then you're going to use a transform 2d to offset it a bit to uh, align better with our shape and then we're just creating uh, the final mask at the end and that's the one we use with the colors and blending and then we will just want to create a bit of a weave and this will create a bit of a fabric-y sort of uh, noise that we can blend over the top to give it a bit of texture. Just that opacity just to uh, make sure it's nice and light and you uh, keep uh, a bit more of the button circularness and don't have it get destroyed too much by the weave. And then we can blend those two together just using a height blend node um, and then adjusting that off contrast to uh, get roughly the result I'm looking for. Moving into a shadow for the button. This is just to hopefully add a little bit more tightness around um, the button itself. Just let it look like it's merging a bit more better with the base shape. This is just ambient occlusion and then they're blending those two together with an add linear dodge. Making sure we're transforming it the same as the button 
uh, transform 2D above. And then finally we can blend that in in front of the button blend height node. Just using a regular blend node for this one, however, under a multiplier. Creating okay, button folds. Um, this is just more specifically, I guess, stress marks is probably what you'd call it when something's really tight. It would create a bit of a fold. Um, the way I'm sort of doing this is, I guess, a fairly lazy way. I'm just creating some simple lines, and then I'm going to use a series of transform 2Ds and blending them together to make a bunch of crosses, and then uh, very quickly, I guess, fake the effect that I'm looking for. There's definitely a lot better ways you could probably approach this. I'd, I'd probably take a more random approach uh, next time, but this seems to work since I was restricting myself to using just the shape node to scatter my shapes anyway. So it worked out pretty good. We're not too worried about the overlapping because when we blend it over, um, we're actually going to subtract um, the original button um, anyway, which will kill all the center overlapping for us. Finally, just do a bit of a blend, make it nothing soft, and then we can push this into our final shape. Next up, we've got our um, wear and tear mask. So this one's nice and fun. So this is just essentially making or aging our cushions a little bit. So from what I saw is it had quite a bit of a cracking material, I guess, which sort of reveals a little bit of the undercoat underwards. Um, so just using a series of uh, masking, I guess, I'll isolate a few of the high point shapes um, give it a good warp just so then it's not um, super uniform and then we'll create another mask out of that and uh, use the random seed to randomize which um, cushion tops we're selecting And then again here, um, this is going to use the mask. So this is just the uh, wearing that I was speaking to before. Um, and we just use a tile sampler and you can just copy these settings on your screen exactly uh, to get the same results I'm looking for. But basically we follow the same sort of technique we normally would for this sort of stuff is it will go into a distance node and we'll create our own um, random crack. So there's the Instagram scan and there's the distance node and you just bang that up into like 5,000 or something crazy and then um, use an edge detect and there you go you've got your your cells you can use frames just to make sure you know which ones are your control frames because you might want to expose those in the graph later and then you can use your flood fill nodes to um, try to mask out certain parts of the shape and then um, gives you some nice uh, randomness when it, it uh, gets blended onto the main shape. Slope blur here is just to um, make some minor adjustments like push and pull with the edges a little bit, makes it a bit more rougher, a bit more natural. In this case, I wanted a bit of a a wearing line along the edge, sort of like you've um, run your finger along it, like a few thousand strokes, and it's redu it's removed the color, sort of thing. And then just transform two D, and um, it just gives us a nice and noisy 
um, and uh, applicable. And we'll, we can always adjust that d depending on how noisy we actually want it. And then just a simple scratch. Uh, so this is just nice and nice and easy using the directional scratches that come with Substance Designer. Just reducing those values down to get something roughly that we want. It doesn't really matter. It's just whatever looks good. Uh, you'll probably adjust this anyway when you come to colouring it or adjusting your final render. Just make sure you expose those values. Then we're going to use a, our buttons mask and we're going to hold alt and then we're going to push that into the opacity of our scratches and that's just going to remove or make sure there's no um, scratches over top of our buttons. And with that, that completes all the foundations that we require for uh, building this material. Uh, in the next video, we'll look at colouring and blending the nodes. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a lovely day.